Okay, so I wanted to talk a little bit about um, you know, my story and also a little bit more about Dr. Hawkins. But just very, very briefly how it started was I was working in the stock market at the, uh, um, as an as a, as a equity analyst. So I was writing up the stock reports for small cap stocks. Um, and I had uh, various addictions going. I was a compulsive overeater. Uh, I also was a workaholic. Um, and um, so one day uh, I was coming back from New York to London and uh, suddenly my feet started to swell up. I had to take my shoes off. When I came to London, my mother was terrified and um, I was admitted to the Royal Free Hospital and I had kidney failure. I'd lost 70% of my kidney function in about 24 hours. So I was hurting towards death. I actually do, I mean, the doctors still to this day don't know what, what happened. I think, I think it was a spiritual event. Basically, my life had been going off spiritual purpose in a bad way. So it was like the universe was waking me up. You know, you've, you're facing death. You're going in the wrong direction with your life. <clears throat> you know, you're going into addiction, you're becoming selfish, you're thinking of yourself. It's all about you. So I had that. The doctors, you know, and it was like, as the doctors were taking all this blood out of me to try and figure out how to save my life, I was facing death. It was like, you know, I realized at the age of 30 that, you know, I'm going to die. And then it was like, there was a, it was a, such a shock, such a trauma, and something in me must have surrendered, because I had a spiritual experience. It was like a heavenly, timeless spiritual experience came upon me. And I heard a voice in this kind of heavenly stillness and timelessness. I heard a voice say, find a spiritual solution. And then that spiritual experience ended. And eventually they released me from the hospital, but I had to find a spiritual solution. And I was, I was, um, I went and joined a, a spiritual group and I was given a, I met a guy, his name was Hans, and he did two things for me. One was that he introduced me to a guy called Muji, who was a spiritual teacher in Brixton. Uh, and he became one of my spiritual teachers, and he was the lineage of his was Ramana Maharishi and self inquiry, which Hawkins had calibrated at 720. And the other thing that this guy Hans did and uh, was give me a DVD. I took the DVD home and I put it in the DVD player, and it was uh, a DVD of Dr. David R. Hawkins. And as soon as Dr. Hawkins started speaking, I had a, what I now realize was a Kundalini experience. As Dr. Hawkins spoke, on this DVD, it was, like, it was like my whole body flooded in bliss and I was just tingling up the spine just as he started to speak. And because of that huge spiritual experience, just as he started to speak on the DVD, I knew it was like the universe was saying, this guy is going to be your teacher, you know. And uh, I mean, this is the hilarious thing, you know, I guess this is interesting. If you're a, spir if you're a spiritual seeker and the universe gives you a hint, take it because you regret it later on. So even though I'd had that spiritual experience, I had a lot of like mental problems around money. Um, and Hans, you know, Hans said to me, hey, Dr. Hawkins, he's in the UK. He's in the UK, he said to me, and I'm gonna drive, he's in Oxford, he's giving a lecture in Oxford. I'm gonna drive up to Oxford. Do you wanna come and meet Dr. Hawkins? And this is true, and it's going to sound ridiculous. And I said, how much is the ticket? And he said, it's going to be five pounds. I said, that's too expensive, I won't go. <laughs> Even though I was dumb, I'm really dumb. I really... So if you get like a spiritual cue from the universe, like do this, and, and you think it might be something important, you know, I would do it because you regret it later on. So anyway, I had that spiritual experience, you know, but I didn't want to go and see Hawkins, even though he was going to drive me up there and pay the five pounds to see him. But later on, I really got into Hawkins, and I, I realized, of course, one of the things is you want to get the grace of the teacher. You want to actually meet the teacher. If you can meet a teacher of enlightenment, it means that you'll have the energy in your aura to transcend everything to the level of the teacher. So Dr. Hawkins, so once I read that, then it's like, my God, I've got to meet him. So, um, anyway, Dr. Hawkins mentioned three things. If you've got addiction, do 12 steps. If you've got any addiction, he said, you, you must do 12 steps. You know, if you suffer from overeating, 
drugs, alcohol, sex addiction, workalism, gambling, whatever it is, you know, um, then join it, you know, and I did join a fellowship for food, I've joined, I've joined ones for money, so there's lo loads of fellowships, um, and so I did that, he says that's the basics, you know, and it's really good, if you can get into a 12 step group, I, I recommend them, because they have a, a 12 step process of clearing your spiritual inventory, which is very powerful. Uh, then, um, then he said the Course in Miracles calibrates, the lessons calibrate at 600 and uh, he talked about cancelling of beliefs uh, and, uh, and, he, and he talked about muscle testing, kinesiology um, and he said, this, he, said, um, he said these great things which meant um, that uh, I, I got his, uh, his, his absolutely amazing, uh, I recommend it, uh, CD selection called Giving Up Illness with the Course in Miracles I really recommend it if you've got physical illnesses or anything like that. And I listened to that and it blew my mind. Um, and the other things he said blew my mind. It was like he had had 23 illnesses and through doing his spiritual work and also cancelling beliefs in the illnesses and doing A Course in Miracles, all 23 illnesses left him. And I knew he'd had gout and I had gout. And many of his illnesses were like life-threatening. And here's the one thing: when I heard this, I thought, "This is incredible." Like one of his one of his 23 illnesses was that every time he went in an aeroplane, he would get this horrific pain in his ears. Um, and he cancelled his belief in this uh, in this problem with the bones in his in his head. And and the problem disappeared as all the 23 other illnesses disappeared. And some. Some years later, he had another x-ray done. You know, he had all these bad bones, misshapen bones. And when they had the x-ray done, his bones and his skull had moved. You know, actually, by cancelling the beliefs, the bones in the skull actually moved around. I thought, that's incredible. You know, and he'd had, he'd had a, a life-threatening infection, which had disappeared, and all these other illnesses. And he ran a Course in Miracles group, attitudinal healing group, in I think New York, uh, for those with grave illnesses like cancer, AIDS, myestivus gravis, and all those people recovered from their illnesses. So he recovered from 23 illnesses, and, and he ran a group for people with grave illnesses, and they'd recovered. And I knew he was telling the truth because I'd had this uh, near-death spiritual experience, and I'd had this amazing spiritual, and I knew God was saying, Sabir, you've got food addiction, Sabir, you've got kidney failure, you're using walking sticks because you get these horrible gout attacks in your feet. You're using asthma inhalers. Commit to what Dr. Hawkins is saying, and that will be the solution. I was like, I knew it in my soul. I didn't need any convincing. If I just follow what Hawkins says 100%, that's going to be the thing. And, um, and then the burning desire came up to meet him. But the only thing was I had now had a trauma associated with airplanes because I'd got kidney failure on an airplane and it was like I had associated, my association was, it was very severe, like go on an airplane, lose 70% of your kidney function and nearly die. So that was my thing of like going on an airplane and he was in America now because I didn't go and see him when he was in Oxford which is really dumb. So if, if, if you get a spiritual teacher in your neighbourhood, pay the five pounds and go and see him. So now it was like, no, I've got to see him and it was like it was like this thing of like life and death. You know, if I go on an airplane again, I might lose the little bit of kidney function I've got left. And I pictured myself like dying on the airplane with my life's 30% of kidney collapsing and just uh, dying of toxicity. But then, I, you know, it suddenly came to me like, I'm willing to risk my life to meet Dr. Hawkins, even if I die on the airplane. I have to see him to get the grace of, of enlightenment. And I think it was a very, very big, and very good karmic decision to put your life to to put your life on offer to grace to meet your spiritual teacher because like it was like saying I want to meet Dr. Hawkins I want God and I'm willing to sacrifice the death of my body to meet him because I can't miss in this lifetime meeting my teacher so I did I mean and I did have uh, you know I had these horrific panic attacks going on the plane, you know, you're going to die, you probably won't you'd be dead by the time you, you, you reach Sedona. And I was going, going through a lot of panic on the airplane. I was reading my Course in Miracles 
on, on the airplane. My cousin, who's a homeopathic, gave me all these sprays and things to try and calm me down. And I got through, and it was like, after I got through in the airport, it was like miracle after miracle started happening. So it was like, I got there, and uh, we had to get, there was like a book, there's a, there's a bus service, but, you know, I got to the bus thing and said, oh yeah, the very last bus to Sedona is leaving in 10 minutes. So if I'd been 10 minutes later, I wouldn't have got it. Took me there, and I um, think, because I met him twice, but if I think I remember it correctly, yeah. I think, you know, he, in the beginning he would walk around, you know, he walked around the lecture theatre shaking hands with people. And, you know, I got in there and I shook his hands. And he'd, he'd, I knew he'd, he'd transcended gout through doing A Course in Miracles and Canton Beliefs and all of this stuff. I shook his hands. And as soon as I shook his hands, I had a tingling in my toes. You know, I knew that was a miracle. It was like important of like, he has the vibration of what I need. Just by shaking his hand, he had transferred his energy to me. And, uh, and I asked him, I asked him a question, um, which was how could I transcend my kidney failure and my gout and everything. I've got these recordings at home of his answers, but he, so he told me to just to do all the spirit, you know, do, just to do the spiritual work. And he was very, very funny about it. You know, he sort of said, at the end of it, he said, just do all of this and either you recover or either you won't. And if you don't, I'll meet you on the other side. And he laughed. And then, you know, I laughed as well, because, you know, so what if you die? You know, it's okay. But um, anyway, and then I came back to, came back to, to London. It was like miracle after miracle started happening. It was like I went to the 12 steps, I got a sponsor. It was the right sponsor for me, because this guy had not only let go of food addiction, but he had he had, had a kidney transplant as well. And he'd gone, it was like the exact spiritual mentor I needed who'd overcome food addiction, who'd gone through kidney failure, had a transplant, and he was the guy allotted by the universe to be my mentor. And he, and with him, you know, all my food addiction left, also my fear of operations left. I got a kidney transplant, and uh, I'm now on that transplant now for eight years, and it went really, really well. Uh, so, my, you know, my food addiction has stopped for ten years. And all these, all these, all these miracles happened um, after I met him, and I knew that I had a huge elevation of consciousness. I think part of the elevation I intuit was being willing to go through the facing death to meet my teacher, because when you face death, it was like symbolic. Would I be willing to face death to meet God? Because for me, like Hawkins was God, it was like the nearest thing to God on the planet. So God in human form, and his calibration was way up there. So I knew it was like, get the grace, would I sacrifice potentially losing my, my, my life? And I think making that commitment to go through your fear and face death is a significant, and uh, to meet God, is a significant karmic thing. I'm sure from that, the miracles that happened, which was like, all my illnesses left, the gout, the, you know, I was, uh, I've, shared, I've shared these. And so it's talking about miracles, and doing a course in miracles. So I had gout, I'd get these horrible gout attacks on my feet and I'd have to use a walking stick as they would inflame up. Horrific pain. And um, I, you know, also I had asthma, take the asthma inhalers to breathe. And I was on, the worst thing, I think it's one of the most horrific things is to be on dialysis. You have to be on a machine eight hours a day. It gives you uh, about 15% of your kidney function. So just enough, just enough cleaning of the blood to just about keep you alive. You felt like a 90-year-old man at the age of 30 with this machine trying to keep you alive. You know, going, so it's really, really horrific stuff. But anyway, I was, I was doing all the, all the things that Hawkins taught, you know, just to let, let go by feeling the feelings, letting those repressed feelings. You know, like he talked about this cancelling of beliefs in illness, because, and in the Course in Miracles lecture, it's like, no, any, everything that manifests in your life is because of a belief. It's not because of the outside world. So you just need to cancel your belief in kidney failure and feel out your feelings. Or, you know, so I cancel my belief in kidney failure, I'm an infinite being. I cancel my belief in gout, I'm an infinite being. I cancel my belief in asthma and just keep feeling out your feelings and doing a course in miracles and spiritual work. And then within a, within a few years, um, they discharged me from the asthma clinic because my lung function was fine. Um, then suddenly my gout attacks stopped happening after I was doing the techniques. And then they discharged me from the rheumatology 
uh, my rheumatology appointments. And then suddenly as I was doing the work, you know, I had a transplant. And then that, that stopped the... So all these miracles were happening. I got, you know, I got this perfect man who'd been... He was also... Uh, he had kidney failure and transplant to be my food mentor. And I now have 10 years of abstinence from my food addiction. So it's quite literally from a guy who was like, you know, you know, on a machine eight hours a day, sometimes using walking sticks and asthma inhalers and feeling like he's almost dead. Um, and, and acting out on the food addiction to where I am now after meeting Hawkins. It's like, it's miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. And there is, um, so, um, that has been my story. The main thing is, like, if you've got any illnesses, cancer beliefs, also, you know, relationships, you can cancer beliefs in bad relationships, in poverty consciousness, in whatever it is. But also the other element in letting go of the ego is just letting go of your oppressed feelings. So if you just sit down with your feelings every day and just try and release any feelings that are just sort of building up within you on a daily basis and let them out. And just become aware of, are you using anything not to feel your feelings throughout the day? Do you have coping mechanisms? Like every time you feel, you feel sad or angry or mad, do you eat a donut? You know, that would be like repressing your feelings, which inflates the ego, which cuts you, cuts off, cuts you off from high levels of consciousness. If every time you have a bad day, do you watch Netflix for three hours? Or every time you have a, de a bad day, do you start to open up a can of lager? Every time you have a bad day. So, if those mechanisms are happening, they they reduce the level of consciousness. So, if you just feel out those feelings instead of going for the coping mechanism your consciousness level will start to, to rise up and sort of cancel those beliefs. So I am I'm a living, living miracle. Here's, here's one of the things as well with the Course in Miracles and what Hawkins said is like, nothing, you know, nothing in the world has, can ha has any effect on you. It's just your internal representations of it which has the effect. So if you cancel your belief in cancer, it's the belief in cancer which creates cancer and the repressed feelings. So. So the thing that I really, one of the great things when he talked about his, uh, I'll, I'll end on this, like he was, uh, Dr. Hawkins was running a Course in Miracles group, and, um, and this was so incredible. If anyone knows about muscle testing, so he was also demonstrating muscle testing, kinesiology at the group, and he would get the students to look at the fluorescent lighting and to, have, and to hold artificial sweeteners on their chest. And every week he would get them to look at the fluorescent lights, they'd look, and he'd check the muscle strength and be weak. Um, so that's, the, and so no, more or less all human beings, when they look at fluorescent lighting, you, know, you check their muscles, they go weak because it makes them go weak. Or if you, if you put artificial sweetener on their chest, their muscles go weak, which means it's not good for you. But when they got to about lesson 76 in A Course of Miracles, where that Dr. Hawkins was doing, and he asked the students, oh, come, come on up and let me just check your arm. Look at the fluorescent light. They didn't go weak. They didn't go weak to the fluorescent light. And they didn't go weak to the art. And then he realized that by doing the Course in Miracles, they were becoming immune to all negative stimuli in the outside world. You know, I thought, God, that's incredible. Because, like, um, I remember he once said, like, if you watch, like, an advert or, or a string of adverts, and you should to check yourself with muscle tests, and you'd be going weak quite regularly throughout the adverts. But imagine, like, if you do the spiritual work, like, nothing in the outside world makes you go weak any longer. You become immune. You know, he had things like uh, allergy to poison ivy. Every time he'd pick up ivy, poison ivy, he'd have an allergic reaction. He just cancelled his belief in poison ivy. And at one moment, he intuitively got it, that he'd freed himself, and he just picked up the poison ivy, and there was no reaction. You see, it's not, it's not the world. Poison ivy has no effect. It's just the belief. You see, everything is happening from beliefs, not from the outside world. Everyone believes that if you've got an allergy to poison ivy, the, po the poison ivy is the bad substance. It's not the poison ivy, there's nothing wrong with poison ivy. If you believe it's bad, then it's bad. If you don't believe it's bad, if you cancel your belief in it and you pick it up, it has no effect. So the world... Um, the world doesn't have a negative effect on you. It's just the, the ego, the ego's um, 
Liga's uh, reaction to it. 